Let's talk about Big Bang nucleosynthesis. When the temperature of the universe was tens of millions of degrees and higher, as it was in the first three minutes, nuclear reactions occurred, just like they do in the center of the sun, where the temperature is that high. But the reactions are a little bit different for a couple of reasons. One is that the uh, sun doesn't contain any free neutrons, so I have here a white balloon representing neutrons, and a free neutron will decay in 15 minutes. So there aren't any free neutrons in the sun. The sun's been around for billions of years. Uh, they all would have decayed already. But in the first three minutes of the universe, you have plenty of free neutrons. So the reactions are definitely very different from what happens in the sun. So what tends to happen is that you get a neutron finding a proton, and they come together and they make deuterium. Okay, this is deuterium. And two deuteriums can come together and make helium-4, okay? Two protons, two neutrons, helium-4. And this is sort of a natural end state because to build up anything uh, bigger than helium-4, you need to get two helium-4s together and that's, on, that's hard to do because there's a, uh, they each have twice the charge of a proton, so it's four times as hard to get them together because of the electromagnetic repulsion. But also, if you just get two helium fours together, they make something that's unstable and decays very quickly. You actually need to get three helium fours together at the same time to make carbon. And by that time, the universe has expanded and cooled off enough that it's just not going to happen. So helium four is the end state. All right, that's the end state, but of course it's going to happen that there are going to be individual deuteriums that by the time the universe has expanded and cooled off so that it's too cool for reactions to happen. There, there will be individual deuteriums that have not found other deuteriums and made the helium-4. So there's going to be a little bit of deuterium left over. And it turns out that the amount of deuterium left over depends on the overall density of protons and neutrons. If there's a very high density, it's going to be easy for almost all the deuteriums to find partners and make heliums. If it's a low density, there's going to be a fair amount of deuterium left over that hasn't found partners. So we can draw that here in this plot of abundance versus density of neutrons and protons. For deuterium, that looks something like this. Okay, And we can also do this with helium-3 uh, and other light elements. Uh, and the curves look basically like that. For helium-4, which is the end product, it actually increases somewhat, fairly slowly, as the density increases. Uh, so what we can do is we can actually try to measure the abundance of deuterium. Uh, and then we can, using that measurement, we can just look down here on this axis and see what was the density of neutrons and protons in the early universe. And what we find is that it was about 4% of critical density. Critical density is about 10 to the minus 26 kilograms per cubic meter. And we can relate that to dark matter by noting that we have many measurements uh, of dark matter indicating that the, well, actually what we have measurements of is the total amount of mass in various environments, indicating that the total density of mass is about 24% of critical density. So we conclude by putting those two things together that most of that mass is not made of neutrons and protons. In other words, it's what we call non-baryonic. Most of the dark matter is not baryonic. And by the way, we have a completely independent measurement of the uh, density of baryons, of neutrons and protons, from the microwave background. I won't go into, but it's based on scattering. Uh, the dark matter particles will not scatter the microwave background, but baryons will. Okay, so the last thing I want to address is the proton to neutron ratio. The simple reactions I showed you making one helium atom, uh, I gave you an artificial example where there was exactly two neutrons and two protons, and it worked. But in fact, the ratio of protons to neutrons in the early universe was seven to one, so there was a lot of hydrogen left over. After uh, taking all the neutrons available and putting them into helium-4, there'd be a lot of hydrogen left over. And if you work out the numbers, it means that about 25% of all the mass is going to be in helium and 75% in hydrogen. 
just because all those protons, which are just hydrogen, have never found neutrons to bind up with. And this is exactly uh, what we observe in the universe, is that it's 25% helium and 75% hydrogen. And of course, as billions of years go by and stars form heavier elements, we get an increasing fraction of heavy elements, but only up to maybe 2%. So this is uh, really good evidence that the early universe was very hot, and this 7 to 1 ratio actually comes from an earlier epoch in the universe, uh, before the end of the first second, that nuclear reactions set that ratio of 7 to 1. So we really have good evidence that the early universe was quite hot, um, and we have fossils continuing to this day in the form of uh, deuterium and helium.